You are the man. What? You are the man. You're the man. You are not <laughs> only just stop it. You you, you play an important role, I think, in, in in the job you do because not only just being a voice actor, but an ADR script writer. Mm-hmm. And I think that having experience in both fields must really aid each other. Absolutely. So, yes. So that's automatically the first question. Oh yeah, dude, that's straight up a symbiotic relationship there. Like, you know, I, I broke my teeth doing, you know, voice work first. I learned my technique, did that whole thing and wrote for about uh, six years before I started, before I uh, became an ADR script writer kind of full time. And uh, absolutely, like the fact that I've been in the booth that long and I know exactly how all of it works. I've, I, I know this, uh, out of just all the scripts I've worked with at that point, I knew what worked, what mm-hmm. didn't. Uh, so, you know, and obviously there was still a learning curve to, you know, starting writing. But once I got that locked in and I was just like, oh, wow, OK. So I know exactly like I. I know the way, the best way to make these flaps, the, like the words fit the flaps, you know, you know, and you know how to play around with the dialogue and everything, and, and it, it became this whole other way of, uh, this whole other form of creative thinking from being in the booth, uh, but the fact that I could also refer to my experience in the booth in order to write those scripts to make them as perfect as I could for both directors and the actors that were coming in really helped out. No. Uh, if if people had lots of problems with my scripts, they never told me. <laughs> so, <laughs> do, you, so. do you ever find yourself being overly critical with yourself? Oh yeah, all the time. Wow. I think that's part of the reason why I, I've made it as far as I have is because I'm just I'm stubborn to the point of like, no, I can do this better. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And, and uh, there are times where I thought like, yeah, you know what, I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made it or whatever. Yeah. And then it just takes me looking back at one performance being mm-hmm. like, I got a lot more to learn. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I'm very critical of myself in pretty much everything I do. With that being said, any of your projects that really like stick out to you that you're just really like proud of? Yuri. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's okay. se- several scenes, especially yeah. in Yuri, that I, that I was just because you know, I mean, it was it was also this very cathartic, uh, almost therapeutic role mm-hmm. for me because I, I got to I had to you know put myself in this emotional and mental state uh, of of someone who has lost their dreams yeah. and and sees their ability uh, as an artist to be lackluster, mm-hmm. and so the in. I'm an artist. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm pretty sure everybody has felt that in some form of yeah, capacity. Absolutely. Like, why am I trying? Why, why am I even doing the thing? Why did I think I could do this and be good at it, or something like that? And uh, so, like, going through that with him and experiencing for myself through him mm-hmm. the way that he overcame those feelings mm-hmm. was was uh, yeah, again, very therapeutic. Uh, to the, I, I learned from yeah. it. Like it, it, it gave me the t- the chance to kind of live that vicariously uh, in a way that I did not experience for myself in yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, it was, and, and it was one of the only times in my career since I started doing theater from at five years old that I've been able to cr- actually cry yeah. in performance yeah. to let myself let go of all of my my doubts about my ability to to perform a scene and just feel it. And it, it was it, it was a very it was a milestone. That's that's powerful. Yeah. Um. So three series I really follow that you are obviously very pivotal in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Super being the Grand Minister. Dude, I, I just I have to do. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and Slayers, uh, Pokemon too. But I really count those three. Okay. Were the anime the. Especially like Slayers being the more non, more, the less mainstream out of the, the the other two, were the three anime that solidified my nerddom <laughs> at, at like 10, 11, 12 years old. And it was just like I'm in it for life. Okay, okay. Because of those shows. So the fact that I am stronger than Goku now, <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, stronger than his whole species okay, okay. <laughs> and 13 other universes it's just it is it is the most surreal <laughs> like this was the dream like in, 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 when I was first like really considering going for this mm-hmm. uh, at the end of my high school ca- career and just being like okay do I want to stick here around here and go to college or do I want to go right out of the gate chasing this dream mm-hmm. and I started to plan for myself okay if I did chase the dream what are the milestones I would set for myself what would I want to accomplish yeah. and the most in the furthest point of that dream was 
Dragon Ball's Dragon Ball comes back and I get a character in it. I get a, and that I get like some awesome. sort of pivotal character in it. And so I've literally achieved everything I said. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> like and I'm just like I'm just riding the train now. <laughs> like, see how far this see how far the ride goes. So like yeah, super straight. I'm sorry I interrupted. Nah, you're good. Yeah, yeah, you got you got My Hero Academia is Tokyo uh, uh Tokyami. Tokyami. I Thank you. It's all good, dude. And Attack on Titan as an army. Now yeah. I'm just gonna go over their their personality traits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so Grandmaster obviously is calm and polite. Tokyami is reserved, serious, yeah. focused, mm-hmm. and um and Armin. Very high intelligence. Yes. Mm-hmm. Would you say, and I, I honestly got an opinion, but I would think so, yes. And mm-hmm. you can tell me if, if, if you disagree. Okay. Do you think a lot of these uh, characters really mold who you are as a person? Mm. That m- mold me? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Armin is a great example of Armin, that. Armin, yeah. Uh, the, and, and much in the same way that Yuri Kotsky, uh, you know, doesn't believe in himself at the, at, you know, in, in his ability as an artist. Armin, when we first meet him, doesn't believe in himself as a person. Yeah. He he sees himself as being, you know, like a, a burden to people, as yeah. being a as as I'm worthless. Like they just protect me because they feel sorry for me and they pity me, and I have to work extra hard just to be deserving of their love and and all these these really unhealthy things. Only to find out. You know, in like at nine or ten, that oh, I don't. Nobody thinks that about me. Yeah, I yeah. think that about uh-huh. me. I'm my own worst enemy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that knowledge, like that's my favorite scene in that season. Yeah. Not the speech. It's just what is that moment just before the speech yeah. when Aaron and Mika are like, "No, bro, we trust you with our lives here. Yeah, like yeah. you always keep a cool head. You yeah. always do this." It's, and he finds that that value in himself. Then, and like it's because he was never a coward, and he always thought of himself as a coward. Yeah, he yeah. stands up to those bullies in the first episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's the first one to say, "Yes, I'll join the scout in the military yeah. with you." Yes, I'll join the scout regiment with yeah. you, and, and is always ready to throw himself into the thick of it for his friends. Yeah. Um, and 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 on top of that, that great intelligence as yeah, well, yeah. just crippling self doubt. And then that moment that he hears that, and, and, and that, that freeing moment of, I am not these things, mm. that Titan body crumbles behind <laughs> him. Yeah. And it's this beautiful, like, yeah. like poetic, yeah. and, and, like, and visual symmetry between his own emotional freedom and that. And then yeah. at that point, it's just like, okay, I got this speech, let's go. <laughs> he just, he's just, I'm in it, okay, we're good. And yeah. from that point on, yeah. he's a changed character. Yeah. Like there's just a and, and 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 for me and that was incredibly inspiring. That was yeah. the like yeah. that again. When I was watching the show, we didn't even know that Funimation was going to get the rights yet. Nobody owned it at that mm-hmm. point. So I got to watch all of it just as a fan mm-hmm. and, and, and to appreciate the characters. And I fell in love with Armin in that oh, scene. Wow. I was just like that. Like I identified with him there, and like I had a lot of my own experiences, yeah, my own yeah. self doubt, and to, like, just to imagine the elation. And and the utter f- like the the freeing feeling that that must have felt like to hear those words from the two people he cares about more than anything in the world mm-hmm. must have been the most like I felt I wanted to cry oh, happy for, for him in that for moment sure. and yeah. so like yeah at that point I was just like if if we ever got it I wanted to audition and I wanted to play Armin and then, you got and then I got it and that doesn't happen <laughs> that never happens in this industry man that it's like impossible so yeah that's still a, that's a dream come true literally that's awesome. And, um, so you're literally living the dream. At this yes. Point. Yeah. Nice. I'm in, in, incredibly fortunate. And I do, well, it took me a while to give myself the credit of like, yes, I did bust my butt to get here. And I did a lot of work and I made a lot of sacrifices and went through a lot of pain to get here. A lot of it was luck. Yeah. A lot of it was also just people believing in me yeah. that were also in this industry that, that gave me a chance. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, yeah, I'm living the dream, but I... It's a dream that hundreds of people played a part in making come true. So I'm just I'm thankful for it every day. Yeah, I did have a question when it comes to like the character like Tokiyama from uh, yeah. My Hero Academia, who's got, June in my opinion, Berlin. limitless possibility, but there's, again. All, there's limitless possibilities as far mm-hmm. as what he can actually do. Yeah. And I purposely don't read the manga because I don't want to get spoiled. I want to yeah, go through same. the immersion process yeah, personally. Same. Um, That's what I did with Titan. And even with Darling and the Franks, I think Code 090, mm-hmm. like, when you have characters you don't spend a lot of time with, like, mm-hmm. from, from us as the audience. Yes. But yet, 
you as voice actor commit so much with it. Do you Thank value you. those kind of characters where you only have like a minimalistic amount of time to do? Yes. And then have to really just showcase everything you have in those small moments? Mm-hmm. Or is it more so guided with like like character you were just talking about from Attack on Titans where mm-hmm. you have more you can kind of develop with so people can see it? <laughs> I feel like for me personally, mm-hmm. the longer running characters are more fulfilling because I do get to spend that time with them and go on these really crazy journeys Journey with them and learn from them. Yeah. Uh, but from the purely creative, artistic point, yeah. Small characters like Tokoyami or like Tyrion from Ruby, you yeah. know, that you know aren't in there all that often. But when they're in there. <laughs> you notice them. <laughs> it's just that's like that's you that. notice them. So like it's 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 really fun to try and figure out. Okay, like what can I do with this character in this moment yeah. to really represent him best? Yeah. And I and, and and just that process alone, I think, is what what you know brings them to life. Like I don't need to steal the scene. I don't mm-hmm. need to steal anything like that because he's not you know he's not the most important part of the scene. Yeah. But just just. Like you said, and I thank you very much for that for the compliment. But like, if if as long as I'm making the commitment mm-hmm. to commit 100 percent to this role, regardless of his size or his you know how how often he's in the role, then it's gonna then at least I did a good job. Right. At least I did my job, yeah. and and that's gonna and, and people hear that. Yeah. If if I just you know didn't care about it or whatever, people are going to hear that yeah. in the in the dub and in the in the performance or whatever. And it's just it takes you out of it. It it, just, it destroys the immersion and it's disrespectful to the character. I agree. So yeah, I just thank you very much. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I I throw my I try to throw myself into everything, and like the I I think they cast me as Tokuyami off of my audition for Ida oh, because really? like yeah I auditioned for like Deku Bakugo and Ida. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, so, like, they kind of cast everybody based mm-hmm. off of those auditions. Wow. And so they gave me Tokoyami. So when I walked in, and I was just like, I'm a bird. <laughs> and I was just like, this is awesome. And then they were like, yeah, he has his shadow and he controls it. And I was just, I'm falling in love with every other sentence. And I'm just like, dude, if he doesn't make it as a hero, he would make the greatest one act death metal band ever. <laughs> like, just going out and singing, like, me and my shadow with, like, <laughs> and stuff and like it would just be so much fun <coughs> just all the and I love the creativity that fans get into with these shows too yeah. and these yeah. characters but like and with, with stuff like that as well but yeah just I fell in love with them the moment from the word go and then to find out that he's basically like a Stardust Crusader like he basically wields a stand you know, yeah. and and, uh, and and just how powerful Dark Shadow actually can yeah, be. Yeah. And I love the fact too, the 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 duality of the character and the fact that his whole theme is a constant struggle with inner darkness. Mm-hmm. A con, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, even his name, the translation for his name is everlasting darkness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like it, that alone makes me so interested in him of like. What is it? What is your inner turmoil? Yeah, what are you yeah, feeling? What yeah, are you going yeah. through with that? And 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 I hope someday we do get to kind of dive, yeah. dive deeper into his his psyche and, and and what it is like to to have this relationship with yeah. literally the darkness within you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that I, I, first of all I didn't know that his name translated that, but I mean that's very humanizing characters mm-hmm. there, and I think that's mm-hmm. probably why between him and Armin now if you look at it like these are why a lot of fans can relate because right. you know. All of us has been through, you know, challenges and struggles in life. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, you know, see the characters develop in a, in, a, in a form of media that we all enjoy, yeah, and someone playing them, yeah, um, yeah. as compassionate as you are, um, that that resonates really good. And yeah. thus, you look around in the convention and mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and like and it's another thing I love about. Sorry, like I'm just babbling. No, you kind like thing in kind of in that same vein one of the things that's so great and powerful about conventions themselves is not only is it this great way for everybody to get together and celebrate yeah. these characters that we all you know yeah. connect with yeah. and love yeah. but the gatherings themselves are crazy and I think a lot of, <laughs> I think a lot of people don't notice the fact that this is a gathering of people from every walk of life, every, yeah, every yeah. race, every religious creed, yep. every sexuality and sexual yep. identity. Yep. And we're all getting along. Yep. Just yeah. And we're all celebrate yeah, because we all connect and That's celebrate right. this same thing in these characters. That's right. And like yeah. The, the the shows like the conventions, you know, reflect the shows in, in their own way. That's right. Too. 
So um, we wrap it up. Where can everyone follow you on yeah. social media and stuff? Uh, best place is uh, Twitter. I really don't use my Facebook anymore. <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't want to be anywhere where someone can type three pages of something at me if you're disagreeing. <laughs> so yeah, just find me on Twitter. I also have an Instagram that I'm trying to get good about okay. using. Uh, okay. Just at Josh Greeley or Josh Greeley for, for, for both of them. Uh, on Instagram, there is someone else who like put their name as Josh underscore don't Greeley. Don't follow him. Greeley Kenichi. Yeah. Or something, but and yeah, that's not me. It's just straight Josh Greeley. Uh, but yeah, you can follow me there, and uh, also on Twitch. And uh, I will hopefully be streaming a lot for the next two weeks because Warcraft Battle for Azeroth launches on Tuesday, and I have two weeks off. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Lots of streaming. <laughs> also, right. twitch.com slash Josh Greeley. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you Josh, so much. Absolutely, so guys. Much. Thank you for the awesome questions and the amazing compliments. Awesome. I'm very humbling, man. Call me the wingman because I'm on his team. Higher than the flag of spaceship you ever seen. Hotter than the sunbeam because it's so real. Call him Mr. Wonderful.